I have lived in Simi Valley for, well, what, well over 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. A long time. 70-something, right? And, mm -hmm. yeah, and so in Southern California, even in my hometown, <laughs> there's things I've never done. There's a mountain in Simi called Mount McCoy mm -hmm. that I drive by several times a week. And I usually, I always say to myself, one of these days I'm going to hike up that mountain. You've done it before. I've done it. I've never done it. I've been here over 40 mm -hmm. years. Today's the day I'm going to hike to the top of Mount McCoy. Yay! <laughs> All right, so Mount McCoy is this iconic site on the west end of Simi Valley. When you drive on the west end of Simi, and I don't know, Julie, if you're getting the cross in the back, but on the top of the mountain is a white cross, Mount McCoy. We're gonna be going to the top of that today. Apparently there's switchbacks that'll go that way, then to the top of the mountain that way. And we're gonna be looking at, I think it's just over a thousand foot elevation gain. So we're in for that today. All Trails is telling me back and forth is just over four miles, a little over two hours. I brought my hiking poles with me today. Julie says she can do this without her hiking poles, but she does have her trusty Nevo to protect her knee. Yes, Nevo. <laughs> so I have my Nevo. Um, I didn't know it was that high of an elevation gain, um, but we have a nice, hazy day it's cool so this should be a, a nice hike um, I don't remember it being difficult so we'll see let's let's just go now the last time I took this hike I literally skipped the switchbacks and went straight up the side of the mountain because I was in a mood so we're not doing that we're not doing that today no we'll take we're taking switchbacks And here we go. forgotten that um, this area right below uh, Mount McCoy is full of volcanic rock so very cool so this obviously is is millions probably of years old and we live somewhere there was a volcano Time. It's dormant now. One of the things I always find interesting when we walk in the hills close to where we live is when you look at the hills from the valley below, it looks like there's hardly anything on the hills other than like small brush. But once you get up here, you see these enormous trees, bushes as you know, that come up in some cases as tall as we are. And there's all this vegetation and life that unless you come up here and experience it, you don't even know it's here so it's a cool uh cool thing to do i think in our santa monica mountains and in this case the mountains in simi valley california So we've been doing an uphill on the switchback trail that we uh, have got on. It's the best way to go, I think, instead of trying to climb straight up. Um, 
It's confusing because a lot of people have made these trails between the zigzags, but it, for me it's been better to be on the zigzag. And we have the All Trails app on our phone in which we downloaded this particular hike and it's helping us to follow on the correct hike. So it's been pretty easy so far, considering that I've had to kind of recondition myself. And we're about three quarters of the way up and we're very close to the cross. So we're, we're almost there, we have a few feet left to go. This side is the land between Tierra Hada and Olsen, and that big building is the Ronald Reagan Library. That land in that area is cordoned off and secure, you can't enter that area, but this whole area beyond it. To the northwest of the Ronald Reagan Library, is all um, open land that can be um, hiked. So that's all land that you can go further back. Um, it's really pretty too. It's, got, it's really gorgeous. So we made it to the cross, but this is a good view of the trail that we took. And you can actually see the switchbacks going up this hill part here where we uh, made our uphill. I made it! Finally! To the top of Mount McCoy! Whoa! I am here! First of all, it's so funny, whenever you have landmarks, people always leave mementos that have probably certain meanings to them, and they leave them at these, these memorials and, and symbols. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to put them back, make sure they're secure. But I always find that interesting. Huh. So all trails did list this hike as four miles, and on the All Trails app, it starts just around, in a neighborhood around Madeira Street. You take the switchbacks like we did. To get to the cross is only over a mile. It's like 1.2 miles. Mm -hmm. So what the All Trails app does is there's a trail that continues after the cross to the other side, and I think if you do that and then probably go back, that round trip would be four miles. So we're not, our destination was the cross. We'll go back. So I think when, when we're all said and done, it'll be about just over two miles, two and a half miles. Mm -hmm. So, and I thought it was pretty easy coming up. It was a workout. I mean, it's not like you're just taking a stroll. Yeah. So you are doing uphill. When we go back, we're going to be doing downhill. Yeah. Thousand foot elevation. Yeah. I feel nothing. Do you feel something? I mean, right now, no. Like cardio? Or? No. Because I felt nothing. I mean, I did at certain points. Uh -huh. Okay. I have to recondition, babe. Oh, okay. All right. I have a heart condition now. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. But if we can do it, you can do it. That's right. Go do it. Go do something. <laughs> so since the year 1813, there has been a cross sitting on top of Mount McCoy. It is not the same cross because it has been replaced, I don't know how many times, but 1813 is a long, long time ago. We are at the current yeah. cross that's been erected yeah. by some of the churches in the area. So back in 1813, the original cross was put up here as a landmark for friars and the very, very few other people who would have lived in this area way back then. It was a marker. Yeah, it was a land marker. Yep. Yeah, so when you're when you're looking for the area, it was a marker that said you're here. It was like 
a, like a lighthouse on land, almost, right. kind of, right. right? You are here. Yeah. Some of the old maps of the area, there's one that goes back to 1858, and on that map, it shows the cross at Mount McCoy going back that far. So there's a long history, well, what, over 150 years, mm -hmm. give or take, right? Where this cross has been here. There was a newer cross erected in 1921 by a gentleman named Robert Harrington. And later in 1941, a concrete cross was put on this hill. And I believe, we believe that's the cross that stands here today. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a few, quite a few years later, because I remember them talking about it, uh, we were living here, that they had to put, you can't see it, but there's a, a, a reinforcement concrete structure around the original, the cross that was last built here. And in 1986, it was designated Ventura County Landmark Number 106. I'm here. You made it. I made it. We are here on a hazy day, which has kind of been nice for hiking, but on a clear day from the top of Mount McCoy, you can see to the east, Mount Baldy, the San Gabriel Mountains, and to the west, when the weather is conducive, the Pacific Ocean and the Channel Islands. All right, so we made it here, Julie. I tried to do a little bit of research before we got here. One thing I still don't know is who Mount McCoy was named after. So that's gonna be your homework I'm gonna do when we get home. Yes, I have a great book on the history of Simi Valley. So maybe that's there. If we find the answer, we'll let you know, because I still don't know. Mount McCoy hike. We did it. I did it. You've done it before. I've done it times. I don't even know how many times. Yeah, a few times. But my first. It's kind of nice now that the weather's starting to cool down. It's nice for hiking because in Southern California, the summer times gets hot. pretty hot. Yeah. So first one uh, of, I guess I would say this new hiking season. Yes. So yeah. thanks for coming along with us. Thanks for joining us. And if you like this video, if you would please hit the like button and join us for future videos. And we'll see you on our future travel adventures at, at the, the places, places where, where we, we go. go. So upon arrival home, we did do our homework. We got out our history book of Simi Valley. It's Simi Valley, A Journey Through Time. This one published by the Simi Valley Historical Society. It's a really thick, great reference book. And we did learn in here some more information about the naming of Mount McCoy. So it turns out that Mount McCoy was named for Charles B. McCoy. He was a salesman for the Simi Land and Water Company who settled on 5,000 acres in the area in the old Cañada Verde Ranch in 1898. He was also a proprietor of the Simi Hotel in the 1890s. And for those who are familiar with the topography in Simi Valley, when you drive through this area today, there's a freeway on one side, there's a, another route on the other side. In those early days, Simi Valley was completely surrounded by mountains. And even when I moved here, the 118 freeway that passes through here today does, didn't exist back then the way we know it today. There was a mountain on the east side of the valley and it wasn't until I started going to college that they actually carved out part of that mountain to make room for the freeway. So back in the 1800s, before cars, getting to Simi Valley was really treacherous. On the east side in the Santa Susana Mountains, there's a famous area called the Devil's Slide where the old stagecoach used to go. It was a very treacherous route. 
And back in the days when Charles McCoy was the proprietor of the hotel, he would put people up in his hotel after that strenuous journey that people went through. At one point, he coordinated a meeting between supervisors in Los Angeles and Ventura County. And through arranging that meeting, was able to get the two parties to survey the land and construct a pass route through that mountains. And that happened roughly in 1899. And up until the days of the Simi Valley Freeway, the way that people would get into Simi Valley once we had cars was through the old Santa Susana Pass Road. So that old road also has roots going back to Charles McCoy. So Charles McCoy did leave a mark in Simi Valley. And today we still have Mount McCoy on the east side of Simi Valley that pays tribute to him to this day.